Alright guys, I got you zoomed in here. I don't know how well you can see this, but this thing does not charge right and that's probably a reason there. There's a good reason there. Let me uh, if I zoom you in a little bit on there. See that? This wouldn't close all the way around that terminal. This would not close all the way around this terminal. So he stuck something in there to take up the space. And as you can see, it's, it's all the way tightened up. So what we're going to try to do here. Uh, let me get you in a little bit. We're going to try to take this thing. Well, see that? I mean, it's loose. Same way with the other side. It's, um, you know, it's tightened all the way up, but I can still do this to it. So, I'm going to have to try to figure out a way. Okay, he bought these for me. He bought the stuff. Uh, Monkey went and took him out for lunch yesterday, get him out of the rehab place for a little bit. and So he gave me these to put onto these ends on these cables here. And then they're going to screw onto here, hopefully. I hope they'll fit. Um, let's just check that right now. And if they do, I'm going to solder them. I'm not going to crimp them if I can help it. If I have to crimp them, I will, but I think I'm just going to try to solder them on there. Okay, so... This is the positive. Yeah, that'll fit. Alright. And I brought another little cable... for the ground for the ground wire too so uh, I think it'll be alright so let's go ahead I'm gonna grab some tools see that's loose let's go ahead and uh, get these old ones off of here and then we'll see what we can do with these I hate these things whoops just dropped one I hate these things they're supposed to go on there they're supposed to help keep from corrosion but uh I don't believe in them. A lot of guys, these things here, a lot of guys, they'll put grease on there, but what causes corrosion, guys, if you think about it, is dirt, right? Well, if you spray grease on there or that terminal stuff, that battery terminal stuff, I don't believe in it because we all know grease. If you drop a little bit of grease on the ground, it picks up dirt and dust and, you know, to me that that's worse than leaving it like this see as you can tell this is not corroded it just wasn't the right stuff let me get the tools and, and let's see what we can do here all right battery cleaner terminal cleaner uh, hmm. I think I may have to get a different wrench but we'll see one might work. So hopefully this will take care of the issue of it starting real slow. I don't think it's getting a full charge into the battery. And I'll check the uh, water level in the battery as well. See, that should be like that. Okay, got it. It worked. Alright, so, let's move this off here for a minute. Just take this and you turn it on there. See that? cleans it off nice and neat same way if you got these things if you look inside there there could be a little paint and there just take your little brush and 
clean it out a little bit. Uh, I remember my dad using a pocket knife and scraping them terminals to clean them. But uh, eventually you're going to wear, wear it down to where there's no, um, you know, you're going to have this problem where this is not going to fit right. See, this one's going to fit really good. Well, you can't see it, but yeah, see, that's going to fit very nice. So what I'm going to do next So, clean these up pretty good. Not too bad, so. See. There. That's pretty decent. That that should suffice. Now, we're going to take these, we're just going to lightly make these into, get them uh, wrapped around there. Can you see that? I'm on the other side of the camera, so I really can't see the screen that well. I'm going to try to solder this so you guys can see. And this is the cable, this heavy cable here, we're going to run on the, uh, to the, uh, which I'll have to get another wrench for it, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to run it over here to the body ground, and this is loose too, huh. Okay, so, I'm guessing that's going to be their starting issue. Now I'm going to try to do this so you guys can see that. Now you can crimp these. I just like to fill them up with solder if I can. So, something a little different here so I can hold this on there. Because I want the solder to run down inside. I may have to end up crimping them. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to crimp that and then I'll solder. I don't have the regular crimper for this. Now I should be able to solder that.
right, there's one. It's not pretty, but I'm going to go ahead and do this next one just like I did that one. All right, so I've got these taped up and cleaned off and soldered real nice. Well, the solder ain't that great, but it's old solder, I guess. So I'm going to put this on here. Don't, don't tap on that, guys. I'm speaking from experience when I tell you don't tap on them. That's plastic. That'll break. Okay. So I'm going to put this one on the bottom. This don't matter, guys. It's just the way I'm doing it. You can do it. Now, I wanted to put a regular nut on this thing. I don't have one big enough, unfortunately. So, I don't know. Maybe I do. Hang on. Let me go check. Nope, I don't. So, I guess we're just going to have to go with them. I hate them things. You can't never get them tight enough. I, I just, I just don't like them, you know. And these don't have to be super duper tight. Just, just till you can't twist them no more. Okay, now this, I'm going to try to get as tight. Shit. No feeling here. I'm going to try to get as tight as I can. Okay, so you can't move them wires. All right. Now this one's pretty much the same way. The only difference is I'm going to be putting this cable on there. I don't know if I can get you down in there, but let's try. Uh, maybe. Let's back out a little bit. Okay, so let's take... Oh, thank you, Bruno. Thank you. Bruno was trying to hand me my wrench. He's a good helper. Okay. Alright, so there's these. And of course, you know, I'll save these for something. These little bolts come in handy sometimes. Uh, the nuts off of them come in handy. But, I mean, they're still good if you can, you know, if you find the right size battery, you know, you could you could use these. I'd say this is a positive terminal because your positive positive terminal is always bigger than your negative. So, uh, but you know, they may be able to be used again in a pinch, maybe on our truck. You know, we'll see. But I'm not going to throw them away. Um, so, what we're going to do now is. I'm going to clean these up a little bit here. I mean, they're not bad. They're not real corroded real bad. So just give them a, you know, a nice, just a nice little deal there. Now, I've already got this terminal clean. So I'm going to clean that one on the battery. You can use sandpaper too, just uh, don't try not to take too much off, you know, you can put sandpaper in there or up inside there, whatever you got. You know, if you have to scrape them, you know, you have to. Uh, but I hate doing that. Uh, there's been times when I've had to do it, you know, out somewhere, didn't have anything but a pocket knife on me. Now, I'm going to bring you around here and show you what we're going to do on this side. Okay, now this, this is mounted over here on the fender, it's a body ground. Let me get my hands out of the way. See that? I noticed when I was checking that wrench to see if it fit, this thing moved. It's not very tight. So we're going to take this one off. Where are we at? See? I'm going to take that one off. And we're going to put this heavy duty bugger on here. But first. I need to go get a wrench to fit this. No.
clean the nut up a little bit on it. somewhere right. remember you can go to the you, you, you can go to the eep but you don't want to go eep snap okay <laughs> all right now let me get you up here in the air so you can see what else I'm going to do next all right, this one the same way as the positive one. Put that down on there. And I grabbed the wrong wrench. Why didn't you guys say something? But that's okay. That's all right. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fire you guys for that. Like I said, don't, don't, don't put these. Don't squeeze them all the way together. They just have to be to where you can't turn them. You don't have to squeeze that all the way together there, okay? Now this one is the ground, so I want to make sure that I get the heaviest one on first. And I cleaned that up a little bit, got most of the paint off of it. And we're going to put this on. this on then we're going to start the truck up and um, we're going to let it charge I know it's dead well it's not dead it's uh I know it's uh it's pretty low because when I started it to turn it around it kind of grunted a little bit so we're going to start it up let it run for a minute and we're going to go from there. like this engine. Right. Okay, let's let it run for a minute and we'll see how well it charges. Okay, guys. It's been about five minutes, maybe seven minutes. Let's shut this off and see if it'll start. I'm going to put, turn you around here so you can see the fan. Maybe you can hear it better. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, let's see how well it starts now. Okay guys, I just noticed something. I'm going to zoom you in over here on this belt. You guys see that? Is it picking it up? See that? Okay, let me take you off the uh, stand here. Whoops. That belt. The belt is ready to break. Down here. See that? So they're going to need a new belt, and I'll put a new belt on it for him. I'm sure he's going to want one. He's a gearhead. I mean, he could do all this stuff himself, but he only has one leg now, and he's in rehabilitation for that one leg, and he's missing some toes, and 
uh, poor guy, but he can't do his stuff anymore, so I am very happy. I, this is my life, you know, doing this stuff, guys, and you, you probably know that, but, you know, I, I've been, I started working in my dad's junkyard at 10 years old. He would give me, say, an alternator, right? He would say, see that red car up there? Yeah. Take this part up there. Yeah. Find the one under the hood that looks like this and take it off. No problem, right? He'd give me the tools I need. Just the right amount of tools. Okay? So, then, I'd come back down. Dad, there's another big piece in the way. Well, there is. Well, how you gonna get it off? I'm like, I don't know. Well, you better get to knowing, you know. Whatever's in the way, you have to take off. Okay? I'd take you some tools up there and take it off. Whatever it was, whatever was in the way, and I'd take it off. And I'd bring him down the alternator. And he'd be like, all right, great job, son. Did you put the old one back on? I'm like, it's no good, Dad. It's a return. It's no good to, you know, why would I put it back on? He said, because. You're going to find out not everything just involves taking stuff off. you got to learn to put stuff back together, which is hardest. And he wasn't lying. Uh, now it's fairly easy to me. You know, I've been through a lot of schooling. I'm ASC certified and a bunch of stuff. And but and he and I would go back and I would put it on. He was right, and I couldn't skip because he'd come up and check my work. You didn't put that belt back on. Well, you just said put the alternator on. Well, how's the alternator going to work if the belt's not on? Then of course me being a smart ass that I am, I'd say, well, how's it going to work anyway? The alternator's no good. He'd say, son, put the damn belt on. <laughs> okay, so so that's how I learned, you know. And then you know I took shop class in school. And then I took a, a trade school. Uh, my last two years, my junior and senior year, I went to a school in Ohio. Um, and I took auto mechanics. They call it auto tech now. I did uh, teach some night classes a few years later at the same shop. And so it was pretty cool. But anyway, and, and but 90% of the stuff you learn, guys, anybody can read a manual and tell you this is what you know you got to take this off this off that off okay come and show me why well, I don't know how because you know maybe they don't have the strength to get that bolt out you know it just says pry on that alternator or you know take this tool and bend it back they don't know how to use the tools and then there's guys that go buy you know ten thousand dollars worth of tools now they're a mechanic no because you have to have this this is the number one tool my dad taught me this is your number one tool you can fix a lot of things with a paper clip and he wasn't lying. Because I know one time my, my fuse blew in my Suburban for my fuel pump. I didn't have a paper clip. My oldest daughter was with me. Bambi. I said, damn, if I only had a paper clip. Because I didn't have any extra fuses. I didn't want to take any other fuses out and swap them. I, I don't want to do that only for testing purposes. I don't want to do that. And she just, all at once, here comes this little hand up. Here, Daddy. I got one. Where the hell did you get a paper clip? You always told me, carry a paper clip. So, anyway, that got us out of that jam. But, right here's the number one. If you don't know how, you know, if you don't know what these are, how are you going to use them? What are you going to know what to use them on? You know? So, this is your number one tool, learn. You learn 90, what I was going to say was, you, you learn 90%, I've learned 90% of stuff on my own. And I don't mean that as in pat myself on the back. I mean because there's not always going to be your teacher there or your father there or your mentor there with you. So you're going to have to learn. You're going to go, shit, you know what? I didn't have to take that off of there. You know? And you learn different things. And you learn by doing it, not by reading it. Remember that, guys. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hope this helped someone. Shea Bear, the myth, the man, legend. I'm gone for now. Bye-bye, guys, and take care.